Eight. Well, I'm telling you what, and then four or more out. This is the worst place to be. You're four games out heading to the trade deadline. It really yeah. is. I mean, you know, you, you know, H, I, I say this all the time. As a, as a leader on the baseball operations side, you kind of always have to know where you're at as a team um, and where your organization's at. Are you being competitive? You're ready to win now? Is it, are you short-term in your decision-making process for the long-term view of, the, of what's best for the franchise? And it comes into play right now because you have an opportunity to win, but you don't really want to put yourself in the position of making any decision that could prevent you from actually having sustained long-term uh, a winning window that may open up for you. Well, and that sounds like the Chicago Cubs. Let's dive in. You, you, you go out, you get Bellinger, you get Stroman, you bring him back, you've got you go make the big move for Dansby Swanson. You finally start to turn things around. You find yourself four out. What do you do? Well, I think the four I think, and a half right now. Yeah, I think you listen on your players, you know, specifically Stroman and 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 Bellinger, just to see what the market may hold for you. Listen, I think they need to keep Bellinger long term. I mean, they do have Pete Crow Armstrong coming in center field. I think he's going to be a tremendous player. They don't have a first baseman. And H, they don't have a ton of what I call, you know, I like to use the word aircraft carriers. Yeah. This guy's had an aircraft carrier year. They should know if it's legitimate or not. They're worth them day in and right. day out. So I'd be well, He does so many things yeah, for you. And he plays multiple um, defensive positions. He's a well above average base runner. He can beat you a lot of different ways, and he's a great human being. And he fits well into that mix they have on their club. Marcus Stroman, I would move. They've got a young pitcher in Brown. They've got from the Phillies, you know, knocking on the door in AAA. I'd love to give him those starts, those 10 starts between now and the end of the year, you know, and I would see what kind of value Marcus Stroman had. They had a window to sign him. They didn't. That tells me they're not bringing him back. And so I would try to see what kind of value I could get for him at the deadline. Um, let's look at the Padres. Because that's an interesting club. Yeah, you know, to me, it's... Uh, Last year, they were getting Soto. Yeah, it's... Uh, if you look at the Padres, their one loss record, H, between the time they, they acquired a year ago to today, they're two games under 500. Mm. And so, you know, to me, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, you keep thinking it's going to turn into a swan, it's a duck. And, you know, when I look at that club, I see talent. But I'll ask you this question. Is it the... Is it the the best nine or the nine best? See, I don't think yeah. you I don't think you yeah. talent your way into a winning culture. When I watch that team play, H, I don't see joy. I don't see a group of players mm -hmm. that are playing for something bigger than themselves. And I don't doubt their talent. I don't even doubt the acquisitions. I mean, it's really hard to acquire that kind of talent and put it all together. But it just doesn't add up for me that they play as a team where winning the game is their primary focus. And I think they've demonstrated that now over a long period of time. I would look to change the mix on that club. So, so who are you moving? Uh, you, you're going to move Soto. I am. Would you be tempted to move Manny? I am. I'd be tempted to move Manny, too. Wow. Probably more of this offseason mm -hmm. than right now at the deadline. I don't know. They're all good players. They're all good guys. I don't know what the reason is for the mix the way it is. How much did the Tatis contract lock them in? Yeah, again, I, I think he's movable right now, too. I think, you know, I think A.J. has a ton of options to go. Wow. So they you may, would consider all those guys. Yeah, they may double down. Maybe not right now, but in the big picture, yes. Not to take a step back and rebuild, but to change the mix on the club. And the other issue is this team has no aggregate depth. This is a team that has to have more aggregate depth. Okay, but well, Hader, I would look to move. Snell, I would look to move. Soto, I'd look to move. Lugo, I'd see what the value is on all of those players. Look Not at, to take a step back, let's but look to try to win. Side, the Mets, a period on the Padres real quick, because I know where they're going to crunch us time-wise here for a minute. But let's look at the Mets. See, the issue for me with the Mets, with Scherzer and Verlander, is that if they move them, where do they go next year for starting pitching? Hmm. But you, you got those that, guys on one-year deals. Con, big contracts, so you might be able to get some other guys in free agent at a lower rate. But for longer terms. They're all on one-year deals next year. Yeah. Beauty of a one-year contract, no matter how bad it is, it's a one-year contract. one year. And so, like, I think the Mets have dug themselves a tunnel that they've got to stay in. And they got to ride it out a little bit. And I do think it's... Can a, they get in the postseason still? Yeah, I do believe they can. Do I think they will? No. Mm. Um, but I just think it's a year. I look at teams in three-year increments. 
I don't think this team was a 101 win talent team a year ago. I don't think this team is as bad as it is this year. I think WBC hurt them a ton. I think, you know, H, when you have a great year, what I have found in my career, you come into spring training next year and you go, oh, we're just going to pick up where we left off. The game doesn't work that way. But Buck didn't have a chance to correct that yeah. in spring training because they weren't there. It would have been his first, like, real spring training because the other one was not. was COVID. Alonzo, uh, Pete Alonzo, Jeff McNeil got no at-bats in the WBC. And so they came in. They weren't ready to start the season. They got started out bad. They've been playing catch up ever since. I, I just Diaz in the WBC. Yeah, I just I Tough. just feel like this is maybe you don't overreact to what happened this year. But they got to get younger and they got to get more athletic. That's for sure. Here's a look at some of their all their players left. I think they had nine players go to the WBC. All right, so that's a little period on the Mets. Um, what else? What other club? Seattle are we for me is is again. When you're when your two main cogs in Ty France and your young center fielder aren't having the years, Ty France has a weighted runs created plus of league average or below, and J Rod just hasn't had that next step superstar year. I don't think they should panic there. They, if you look at their aggregate numbers, their starting pitching's great, their bullpen's been great. I just think their two best players haven't been the aircraft carriers that they needed. So to you're be. not making, you're not moving. I'm not, anybody. I'm not you're moving not. anybody. I'm not blowing things up. And I don't think they've got a chance. They have a chance to get into postseason. I don't think it's going to happen. But I think so. When Jerry came out last week and said, "I'm looking to 2024," how did you how did you read that? I got it completely. And I think it took him recognition that some of the deals that he made in, in Wong and Hernandez didn't work out the way they should have because they're two good players that didn't play well. I don't know the reason why. I just think this team is set up to be really good in that division for a long period of time. So I wouldn't panic. Um, you could ha you could have a good process in place and have a bad year. You just you have to know that your process is good, and if it is, I don't think you should panic when you're not having the year that you expect that. All right, last one. The hottest team, really brand name wise, is the Reds. They've come back. Do they make a move, or yeah. are they ahead of themselves? No, I think they should make a move. You never know when your window of opportunity is going to open up at all, so you don't mm -hmm. overthink that. But I don't think they should make a move that's going to be at the detriment of their long-term ability to be really good in Cincinnati with the young collection of talent. So finding a starting pitcher and maybe tweak a bullpen piece, if you can find a starting pitcher that had some length to it beyond this year would be even better. All right, last thing, we'll let you go here, Dan. These moves, you're looking at the board now, the Reds, the Cubs, all that, Cardinals where they're at. When do you start making these decisions? It's not going to happen on the first, you're not thinking about it here on the 20th. No, you already should something. know what you're trying. Every one of those clubs, like, I'm not a big believer, like, I'm going to wait three more days to see what kind of team I have. If you don't know the kind of team you have by now, you shouldn't be in that position. Right. Right. You should know what kind of team that so, you have. So behind the scenes, you're sending out your scouts. You're, you're oh, that's out. already been done. Now you're making phone calls. You've got multiple people in the front office that have different relationships with all 30 teams or all 29 teams. So everybody's making calls, checking in on those teams. And, you're and you should to find know out. all the prospects. Absolutely. Them. And you're trying to find, up where, find out where you line up with what you're trying to do. It's good stuff, man. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. It's outstanding.